many as half of its employees were laid off. There are laws that protect workers. It's another round of job cuts. Google, Amazon, and Snap. Enough is enough. And Snap says it's laying off 10% of its workforce, while companies like Okta and DocuSign are each laying off around 400 employees. Behold, the tech layoff tracker of despair. No, death. No, no, no. Too, too dark. Getting fired sucks, and so does this chart. The question everybody wants to know these days is how hard is it to actually get a job in tech? Given the tragic amount of layoffs that we are seeing, are these layoffs a sign of something more sinister, or are they just signs of a stagnant job market that is making it difficult to land a job these days? And probably for most of you watching are concerned, landing a job in cybersecurity. If we refer to the LinkedIn Workforce Confidence Index, a measurement of the anxiety levels among workers, we can see that while IT is not the biggest concern, it's up there. Let's talk about it. First, we have to figure out what the actual f is going on and how many layoffs are we actually seeing. Then I'll go over what this actually means for us tech people and my advice moving forward. So, looking at a few of the big tech layoffs, we can find a mixture of entirely different positions. No one is safe! What's interesting to note in Facebook's case, I mean Meta's case, is that non-engineering roles are being hit the most. So there's hope for us engineers, right? <laughs> oh no. We've got 8% of Microsoft's gaming division being laid off, which after their $68.7 billion, yes, you heard that right, billion dollar acquisition of Activision Blizzard, it's kind of a shock to see that kind of a layoff. Twitch laid off 35% of their workforce, which sounds dramatic, but that's only 500 compared to the thousands we're seeing in other companies. By sheer numbers alone, Google, or rather its parent company, Alphabet, has laid off 12,000 employees. Looking at this chart, the number of tech employees let go, one might think the worst is behind us, right? No, actually the total number of tech layoffs is trending up. We're approaching critical mass. Everyone for themselves. Scatter. We need side hustles now. Second job. Breathe, breathe. Okay. <sighs> One can speculate all they want about what's causing the layoffs. It could be due to the overhiring that was done during the pandemic where employees were forced to work remote. It could be companies hiring to simply increase the perception that stockholders have of the company as a way of artificially increasing the value of the company. If more people are buying the company stock, that means the company's doing good, right? You sure about that? Inflation rates are actually trending down after peaking at a 40-year high of 9.1% in 2022. Now it is trending down, but I'm not going to go into politics because that is an endless rabbit hole of a discussion. Or maybe it's just like companies are saying, to reduce headcount and to operate more efficiently. We all know someone who's got a job where they do pretty much nothing all day way too much downtime <laughs> not me though i work a full eight hour shift and i do a lot i'm so busy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's very hard now this might sound controversial but i personally think that there's a lot of jobs that are so hyper focused on one particular thing that you could probably combine that workload and offload that to somebody else to a different position if you can fire half the workforce at twitter and still have a functioning website that's still running okay as far as i can tell <laughs> i'm pretty sure some of those jobs were in fact unneeded but regardless of the reason of the layoffs that should not be the primary focus in all of the news outlets and media right now. What we actually need to focus on, more so than the doom and gloom that sells papers and gets those clicks on those articles, is the job forecast and actual jobs available. Yes, these layoffs are scary, and yes, Twitter cuts 50% of its staff sounds like it's going to be impossible to find a job. But is that actually the case? <laughs> well, let's take a look at CompTIA's Tech Jobs Report. This provides a monthly snapshot of IT employment. In terms of tech industry employment, as of January of this year, we see an uptrend. We also see a drop in unemployment from 14% to 4% nationally and 4% to 2% in tech. If we take a look at job postings, yes, the active and new job postings are going down significantly, but they're not at zero. We're still seeing 400,000 active and new job listings on a month-to-month -month basis. And for the sake of simplicity, let's do some math to see how many people might be joining the tech industry workforce in 2024. How many people turned 18 in 2024? Well, 2024 minus 18 is 2006. How many people were born in 2006? 4.3 million. What percentage of the population works in tech? About 7.9%. So we're looking at just over 300,000 people that could be potentially entering the tech industry workforce in 2024. But Mad Hat, you idiot, that doesn't account for the older people or just people looking for a new tech job or the people that got laid off. Well, you're right. Well, apparently in 2023, there are about 12.4 million people looking for jobs in any given month. If we take out the same 7.9% 
that work in tech from that amount, we get about 1 million people applying for tech jobs. Presumably 300,000 of which are fresh 18 year olds yellowing their way into the tech space. This leaves about 700,000 older people that are either unemployed or employed looking for new tech jobs. And given this also doesn't take into consideration all of the massive layoffs that we were seeing this past year, with over 400,000 people laid off in 2023 alone, we can assume that there's a fair bit about more than 1 million applying to jobs as of 2024. Now, obviously everybody laid off isn't working in a technical position. Some could be marketing or project managers, but still there's a good portion of the layoffs that are adding to the tech competition. And with surveys like this one indicating that there's a disproportionately high percentage, 55%, saying that they're likely to apply for a new job in 2024, it's probably even higher than that. So this begs the question, are there more applicants than jobs? Well, broadly speaking, no. Pretty much anybody can get a job at McDonald's these days. The number of unemployed persons per job listing is less than one, meaning that there's more jobs than unemployed people. But that's just true of all industries as a whole. We're in tech. Checking the numbers from earlier, we're seeing anywhere from 1 million to 1.2 million, that is accounting for layoffs, of people applying for tech positions. In 2023 alone, US employers advertised 3.13 million IT job postings. So what does that mean for you, a person looking for a new tech job? That means there's currently three IT job listings for every one person that is looking for a tech job. These are even better odds than the national average of two jobs per every one person. And even with job openings in tech down from a high of 8.3% in April of 2022 to 4% as of December, there still remains an upward trend overall. Tech is still consistently growing and growing at a fast pace. Information security analysts, for example, is growing at an even crazier amount, projected to grow by 32% by 2032, supposedly. But it does make sense, given that I currently am a security analyst, why there would be an increase in needs. So is the reality of the tech industry jobs also the reality of the cybersecurity jobs? This map available on CyberSeek indicates that there are 500 quote-unquote open job positions that were available between September of 2022 and August of 2023. Obviously we're in 2024 now, so that number is probably a bit different as we can tell from CompTIA's data set, but I imagine it's pretty close to that number still, and we're probably still close to the 500,000 cybersecurity job listings currently. And these are of course positions that are ranging from entry level, quote unquote, to senior level positions. So all you newbies, don't get too excited. And even with the reduction in job postings, the growth in tech and cybersecurity is never gonna go down. In fact, as you've seen, everything is trending upwards. Tech is getting more complicated. AI is making it even more complicated. So we're going to need to start learning some more advanced shit to keep up with the times. Anyone in the cybersecurity industry can attest to how the cyber attacks are growing more and more sophisticated and AI is just throwing a wrench into things and making them even more complicated. And with the rise of AI, we're of course seeing a natural influx of demand for AI specialists. So we're gonna have to embrace AI and all of our tech to improve and streamline our work. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again. There's a growing fear that AI is going to take over multiple jobs, multiple positions and make us obsolete. Anything from coding to analysts to engineering even is gonna get taken over by AI soon, so why bother? But anybody who's worked with AI tools a day in their life can attest to the fact that it's incredibly complicated to implement AI in a small to enterprise level environment. And the bigger the environment, the more complicated it gets exponentially. Because the problem with automation is that you don't want things happening automatically that you didn't want to happen. So what do I think of the layoffs and what am I doing to protect myself? Well, the layoffs are an unfortunate and almost uncertain surprising results, in my dumb opinion, a combination of all the problems that we've discussed and that businesses face. Financial uncertainty in companies creates a perfect storm of overhiring, and now instead of attempting to repurpose the hires that you hired, which is presumably more expensive to do, they are outright laying off the entire department and are hopefully in the process of fixing their hiring process. Like I said before, if Twitter can fire 50% of their company and still function, then most likely all the other big tech giants can probably do the same. Hopefully they can get to a point when they hire somebody they actually need to solve a purpose in the company and improve a product or a service. Instead of hiring to make stockholders think that the value of your company should be more than it is and that the company is growing like crazy or hiring for a future potential need that never comes to fruition. As for what I'm doing to protect myself, as the saying goes, I'm not keeping all my eggs in one basket. I've got side projects, side hustles, this YouTube channel for 
for example, is a side project that I love doing more than my current job. And I'm always on the lookout for new opportunities. You can never be too comfortable at any given employer because you never know if you're gonna be one of the employees picked off for the next round of layoffs, no matter how well you do your job. Businesses are always trying to maximize profits and if they can reduce their operating costs, you know, employee paychecks by 35% while maintaining or even reducing their profits by anything less than 35%, then that is a net positive for the company. It's an unfortunate result of big business where the lives of people are treated so carelessly. If only it was so simple as hiring somebody who can do the job well and does the job well and not having any fear of getting laid off for no real reason. But that doesn't seem to be the case with any of these layoffs. They're a mix of incredibly hard workers, some not so hard workers, and some people who just play World of Warcraft for most of their remote workday. How does it feel to treat me like you